Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for attending. This is the first of our uh, internship webinar series of the spring, although it doesn't look like spring outside. <laughs> um, this is uh, today we're going to get a presentation from um, Middlebury College, and on uh, I'll introduce the people who are presenting there in a second, or they'll introduce themselves when I turn it over. But um, th they have uh, a nice presentation to to give today about their internship program. So. Um, Basically, I'm just going to kind of go through some things, talking about the last session, um, and then I'll turn it over to Peggy and her team from Middlebury to give their presentation. Um, any questions or answers, questions you have, uh, please put them in the question box on your uh, GoToWebinar uh, toolbox. It should be in the top right-hand corner of your monitor. Uh, there's a set a place for questions. You can ask them anytime, uh, but we'll, we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. And then... We'll just close out with some information on upcoming webinars and things like that. So um, now currently uh, we did about eight webinars uh, from back in 2017. It was in the spring into the summer and those are all have all been recorded. So you can go back and um, review those. Uh, there's the link, but don't worry about having to type in that big long link. Um, you'll get a copy of the presentation. This presentation um, be emailed to you. So um, don't worry about that, uh, but you can view any of those ones uh, from the past. Um, so I am actually going to skip the poll question for now, since we have a, a little bit smaller group probably because of the weather, um, and just go into uh, introducing uh, the folks from Middlebury. So we have Peggy Burns, we have Dee, and we have Tracy uh, on the line from Middlebury, and I'm going to just turn it right over to them, and they can get moving on their presentation. So. Hi, Peggy. Welcome. Thank you, Bill. Uh, so we are delighted to be here, and I'm the director of the Center for Careers and Internships, and I'm here with two of my favorite colleagues, uh, Tracy Himalaisham, uh, who is our social impact career advisor, and then Dee Gilbert, who is our assistant director of employer relations and outreach. And uh, the two of them are very much responsible for a lot of what happens uh, here in Vermont and kind of the executors of, of what we call our Vermont strategy. So what we thought we would do is just tell you a little bit about uh, Middlebury and Middlebury students and, and uh, their interests and, and uh, kind of give you a sense of, of Middlebury and internships uh, by the numbers and then talk a little bit more about our internship program. Uh, Tracy will uh, give some details on that and then Dee will also talk about then just how to get started in terms of hiring uh, Middlebury students. So this slide is the uh, class of 2017 at a glance, and this is about six months out after they graduated in May, our stats. And you can see uh, uh, um, the majority of our students, the vast majority after six months are either employed or going to graduate school, uh, fellowships, volunteering, et cetera. And there's another 6% or so who are still um, conducting their job search. Uh, we have a lot of students really interested in the STEM fields, and, uh, and we have a fabulous acceptance rate in terms of our students who are heading on to, to medical school. But if you take a look at our top career fields and with also the understanding that there's a lot of overlap in those fields. So, for example, and students are only allowed to check off one box on this survey. Um, you may check off consulting, but you're really doing environmental consulting or you may uh, check off environmental, but um, it's really a paralegal position. So it could also be considered law. So, um, but you'll see financial services at the top with number one. And actually, interestingly enough, that number is going down from what it was say about five years ago, where it was about a third of our students. Um, and then followed by consulting, um, science and healthcare, uh, arts, media and communications, tech and education. So uh, a very kind of broad array of, of what our students are interested in, the types of, of uh, careers that, that they pursue. Uh, we are a, um, a, a career center that is um, very uh, student centric and very passionate about working closely with our students who um, I think as you know, um, or if you've ever met Middlebury students are among the best in the country and delighted to help them um, think about their future, embrace their future and uh, explore what it is that they want to do. And internships is one of the very best ways of doing that. 
Uh, we have about $600,000 in uh, summer internship funding for students who have either uh, an unpaid internship or a very low paid internship. Um, and uh, we'll talk about the, our Vermont numbers in a bit, but we're hoping to um, expand the, the number of students in Vermont that we support. So again, um, just, just some of our overall statistics and, and uh, um, happy to answer any questions about those as, as uh, after we end. So I just want to mention that we are really committed to Vermont. Um, this is a, a deep personal passion among the people around this table and also in our entire career center. And I think really um, what we're doing as, as an institution in general and uh, very much um, in line with um, uh, Governor Scott's uh, concerns about um, keeping uh, uh, students in Vermont, young people in Vermont, either, you know, post-graduation or during the summer so they can explore Vermont possibilities. You know, we um, hear too often, oh, there are no jobs in Vermont. And we know that that's not true. And uh, and we are launching a campaign with our students to, you know, to help them think otherwise. So just in terms of some of the stuff that we're doing um, that's Vermont specific, um, we posted 150 Vermont jobs and internships in our um, uh, opportunities database last year. We funded more than 20 um, unpaid internships in Vermont um, last summer, and we do every year, um, including somewhere. It's not a question of competitive funding, but instead the funding travels with the actual internship, like at Shelburne Farms and um, Agency for Natural Resources and some others. We have a great relationship with Porter Medical Center and a lot of shadowing and internship experiences there. Our students are very active in the um, regional emergency services area. And we're also about to uh, launch a, um, an alumni student mentoring program um, that will include Vermont alumni and students interested and, in living and working in Vermont as uh, the pilot program. So this is where we stand on this, and, and it may sound um, cliched, but, but we, uh, we really do believe this, uh, that uh, all of our Vermont relationship, our related initiatives, um, in addition to, of course, enhancing the undergraduate experience, uh, we really do feel that it helps facilitate a path for grads to stay in Vermont for employment. Uh, it gets us, you know, selfishly so, more statewide exposure for the college and the contributions of our students. Uh, it helps contribute to a more robust economy, a more just society, a more vibrant culture. Um, again, all of those things reflecting uh, what we're uh, the, the career paths that our, our students are interested in. And of course, it engages um, college alumni who are living in Vermont. And now I'm going to turn it over to Tracy Himalayshim, who will talk a little bit about the numbers. Great. Thanks, Peggy. Um, so by the numbers, I think I'm just going to sort of cap it as sort of the student alumni profile and picking up where Peggy left off. Um, so we have about 2000 alumni living in Vermont now, which is um, which is great. And many of those uh, alumni actually, you know, stayed here um, after they graduated um, through internships uh, that they were able to secure in relationships through funded internships um, through our office. Um, so you can see here that about 10% of our students have identified Vermont as a geographic preference for jobs and internships. Um, we get a lot of our data that we can glean from Handshake, the opportunities database that we use. And we ask students, you know, besides asking them what industries um, and um, skills and functions that they'd like to do, they also um, can identify geographic preference for their opportunities. We have about uh, 350 to 400 students who stay on campus to just work for Middlebury College, um, with about one third doing research um, with faculty, and then the other two thirds are doing campus jobs. So you might often see a lot of our international students who will stay um, through the year. Um, 35 of the class of uh, 2017 graduates, they actually remained in Vermont here um, or went to grad school um, and about one third at the college. So they were working uh, in different types of jobs on campus like fellowships. So Middlebury College has developed, um, I would say a robust fellowship program. It's a one year opportunity 
uh, for a graduate, uh, graduating senior to transition into a career. Um, Middlebury students provide, yeah, so this comes from our center from uh, community engagement. They provide about 50,000 volunteer hours annually in Vermont. So that's a lot of volunteering, but what it also enables our students to do is really get to know the community and become more familiar with the types of organizations, nonprofits, service, direct service organizations within the state. So they're they're, they're traveling around and getting to know um, those opportunities. And then lastly, Peggy mentioned this, we provide about $600,000 in funding to support 270 students doing unpaid summer internships. And again, some of that support goes uh, directly, uh, sort of stays with the opportunity uh, that we have developed relationships with partners um, in the community. Um, the next slide just, just gives you a, a small sampling of some of the agencies that Vermont students have worked with. I mean, currently, right now, we've got several opportunities with the Agency of Natural Resources, Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, we send uh, students to, they work with uh, both Vermont legislators and our, and our federal uh, uh, let's see, Leahy's office, and I think Sanders' office. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've off, we've actually had interns working at uh, with federal judges as well. So this is just a little sort of view of that. This slide is just really to show you, um, we really try to push out these opportunities. So it's one thing when we can get you to go ahead and post them in our, um, our opportunities database, the handshake, but there's other opportunities for us to really get the word out to students. And we, the, our CCI, our office, each of our sort of uh, advisors has its own blog. And so we're all trying to really, um, you know, familiarize students with stuff that's out there. It may not be a job or an internship per se, but you'll see, for instance, on the right, on the social impact blog, um, we work with the uh, other centers on our office who are sponsoring ways to for students to explore different careers. And this one happens to be one of the Vermont venture trips um, with our innovation hub. And they were visiting some startups. Um, I think they mentioned Bees Wrap um, and some other uh, locations as well. So there are opportunities for students besides jobs and internships to do some career exploration. So what makes a great internship? And this is really sort of the messaging um, that we wanna get to you all as employers. Um, so, you know, really it's starting with what the expectations are. So, um, and one of the best ways to really, you know, as we say, set a student up for success is to think about some thoughtful training and orientation. Um, so many times students go into uh, an internship opportunity and they really haven't been oriented. And, um, you know, it just, then it, it, it doesn't really um, prepare the students for what they should be expecting. And I think this is a way to do it. Um, another way is just thinking about the sort of professionalism and ethical conduct. It, so some of the opportunities are going to be in the field, and we've got a lot of those with GIS mapping um, and so forth, where they're out doing field work. And, and even in those settings, it's really nice that our students can be sort of exposed and mentored by professionals so that they can see what it's like to be in a, a, in a professional environment. Um, the other thing that we mention is just sort of really setting up goals and ob objectives um, specific to them. Again, you know, our students, you know, for the most part, really take initiative. Um, they often try to see where there are gaps and see if there's ways that they can help out. But, you know, they're still college students and um, helping them to set goals is a really uh, great way for success. Um, the other thing we would say is, um, you know, Think of ways to evaluate them. At the end of every um, internship, we do ask, you know, the sponsors have to fill out an evaluation form. Um, and we actually ask you very specifically, um, you know, are there a set of skills that they actually provided that you felt that you could 
evaluate and what were they lacking? And this has really helped us to understand like what are some of the opportunities, you know, the range. So we had 270 opportunities. And if we see that our students are, are sort of grading below standard on a certain skill, as a career office, we're saying, you know what, how can we actually enable them to be successful? What can we be doing during the school year that could help them to um, be really productive in their internships? And then the last thing I'll just say is, um, you know, meeting with the interns. So again, you know, a lot of things are done remotely. Um, if there are opportunities that you could set up um, for guidance and giving constructive feedback, um, it's the real world and we wanna make sure that they get a little taste of that. So I'll move to the next slide. Um, this is just basically looking at who our students are again. You know, they come from all different majors. Um, the one thing you should know about Middlebury is that we are a college that do, does not offer college credit for summer internships. However, we do offer credit for internships during our winter term, which is a January one month internship opportunity that they can do. Um, typically what we're looking for, for especially for funding an opportunity is you know, 30 to 40 hours per week. Um, our students, they do do internships during the fall and spring. It's not as common, I would say. Um, there are very few that do it. Um, some students, especially seniors who have a lower, like they're not um, taking as many classes, could take advantage of that opportunity. But I would say typically you're going to see our internships are going to be during the summer. And if, you know, if there's an opportunity that our, one of our students could work with you on a project during January, it could be even remote. That's a great way for you to take advantage of using Middlebury students. Um, we do say often, um, if you're going to post a handshake, we're asking you not to keep it open for more than 60 days. We tend to think that the, it gets a little stale and the students, you know, they're, they, they typically, uh, they, they treat deadline applications like term papers in the sense that they wait until the deadline and literally at probably 11.59, any of you who have worked with us before, if you're on this phone call, will see that the number jumps up. You know, you, you looked in Handshake, you only had two applicants. By the next morning, you may have eight or 10. Um, and then in our database, we don't have a really, you know, hard line about whether it's paid or unpaid. It can be either. And, you know, if you are providing an unpaid internship for the summer, um, what we do want to work with you on is to set the deadline so that um, it's it, the deadline is by mid-March because this year, for instance, if you want to apply for funding for an unpaid internship, that deadline this year is April 8th. And the student has to have already gone through the process of securing the internship before they can apply. So it really helps if you set your deadlines earlier. Um, and if it doesn't work out with a Middlebury student, then you can open it up to other, you know, other schools, other students. But for us, if you want to try to, you know, work with us, the student to get funded, that would be an opportunity. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to hand it over to Dee Gilbert now. Thank you, Tracy. So yes, the most effective way for us to promote your internships and maybe jobs later is through our online database handshake um, there are about 475 schools who post a handshake now including uvm um, so creating an account is fairly easy in handshake as you can see on the left um, ask some simple questions for the first step um, and when you sign up there you'll get a confirmation email that takes you back into handshake and then allows you to add more details about your company, um, your website, a logo perhaps, any information like that. Um, at that time, you can also choose from that list of Handshake schools to uh, which school you might wanna post your internship or job. Um, and those schools will approve you as an employer. So once Middlebury approves you as an employer in Handshake, then you're able to post um, internship or a summer job for our students and a full-time job for our seniors. And then you can also manage all of your applicants right in the Handshake system. 
Um, this is an example of a posting opportunity that has two applicants. And if you were to click on the name of the applicant, um, you would able to see, you'd be able to see their handshake profile, also their um, cover letter and um, resume or any other material you, see, you may have required in the posting will appear there. Um, so you can manage this right in the system. Um, you're also able to add people from your recruiting team to receive applicant packages via Handshake, and they do not need to have a Handshake account. So one person in the company can be in Handshake, and then you can add people to get those via email. Um, Handshake also makes it easy for you to require students to go through your applicant tracking system if that's necessary, in addition to applying on Handshake. And Handshake has a robust help center with lots of information, step-by-step um, -step instructions and videos to help you. And then you can also contact me directly if you have any questions about Handshake um, or posting jobs and opportunities um, in the future. So we just want to take this opportunity. Thank you for your time. We look forward to working with all of you in our efforts to provide our students with great opportunities and within the state of Vermont. And we're happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, Tracy and Peggy, for a great presentation. Um, I'm glad you brought up, I think Dee was the one who brought up using Handshake. Uh, we do actually use that. We, do, we, we already are set up as an employer, I think, with uh, Middlebury, which is good. So if any of you as hiring managers wanting to post an internship, you just have to create your account and attach it to the state of Vermont. And I think you can create your own, if, you're, if your agency or department isn't created yet, um, you can add your division uh, into that. So um, we do use it. It's a great tool. And in, in like Dee had mentioned that um, you, you can post, you can write out your job posting and post it to you know a multitude of different colleges, but obviously the ones local are the preferred, <laughs> and Middlebury and UVM are on it. So um, that's great. Um, I did have one question. Um, there was one question for uh, the Middlebury team, and that was, do you have any suggestions for hiring managers who'd like to start a, start building an internship program but don't currently have any structured projects for interns? Um, so sure, and and that would actually be, you know, we would certainly be willing to have that, you know, kind of a, 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 a direct conversation on that. But as Tracy um, talked earlier about, you know, what makes for a great internship and, and thinking about responsibilities and duties, and um, I think it's important so often managers, um, particularly I think in government and nonprofit, a lot of the, the different managers that we work with, it's just kind of this thought of like, oh my gosh, another body in the office, you know, someone who's really smart, right. takes initiative, is motivated. But, but yet if there's, if there's not um, some degree of structure with specific things for that person to do, as opposed to lots of miscellaneous um, tasks, that it, you know, it ends up not being nearly as productive or fulfilling for both the manager and the intern. Very, well, I shouldn't say very often, but every once in a while we'll hear someone say, oh, you know, an intern's more trouble than she's worth or, or whatever. But that's because they really haven't thought through um, exactly what that intern should be doing in terms of, of, of the training and the onboarding. Our students, um, and just the way we treat our student staff, because we have a number of student staff during the year and then also in the summer as well, are, are looking to be considered as staff members. You know, yes, they may be an intern and yes, it may be um, just temporary, but the, the contribution, when we read our student e evals and, and their, their thank you letters and everything, I mean, it is all about the fact that they feel that they have made a meaningful contribution. So, um, so again, you know, thinking if, if there's something specific that the questioner has in mind um, that where we could help, um, Tracy would be delighted to, uh, you know, to talk to that person directly and, and give some um, um, guidelines on it and, and our um, Tracy's email addresses in the in the beginning of the presentation. Awesome, thank you. Um, another question was, um, do you find the students have any preference? Your your students have any preference for public sector nonprofit work versus private sector work, or is it kind of you know they really it's more kind of targeted towards what their career aspirations are? 
Um, this is Tracy. Yeah, I, you know, I work with students who are interested in those sectors. And um, I think there's a, there's a lot of interest. And, you know, I think sometimes there, you know, you may see it wane depending on the political party that's in office. But, you know, for the most part, they're just so eager to learn. And, you know, when they think of government, you know, they sometimes forget that when they read a job description, say from the Agency of Natural Resource on, you know, doing GIS mapping in the Otter Creek, you know, they're just thinking about the skills they're gonna be gaining and the experience. So it, it you know, they almost lose sight that it's working with, a, you know, a, a state organization. Um, so sometimes I think their lines are a bit blurred about between the private and the public sector because I think what they're hearing about in school is about, you know, get these skills, you know, um, you know, your, your internship is like your first entry level job out. Like that's what, you know, that's what employers talk about today. Um, right. So does that sort of answer the question? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, that, that's great. Um, okay. Well, good. I think for now, that's all the questions um, I've got. So I'm just going to keep moving forward and we can wrap up. Get my bearings here. Okay. Um, so just so you know, we, we have some upcoming uh, webinars uh, next week, Southern Vermont College and uh, SUNY Plattsburgh. And then on the 28th, Castleton University in Southern New Hampshire University will be presenting. Um, again, you can go and register for those um, at that URL and uh, I'll also provide that the, this presentation so you'll be able to just click the link and not have to type that long thing. In. So um, again, thank you to Peggy and to Dee and to Tracy from Middlebury. It was a great presentation. And again, I will send out the, this, this in a PDF form to everybody who attended. Um, I really appreciate uh, your time uh, and uh, look forward to talking, hearing, seeing most of you uh, coming back for the next webinar presentations. And again, thanks, Peggy and Dee and Tracy. Have a great day, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank you. so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.